Hello, this is John from TC Math Academy. And in this particular problem, we're going to be talking about money. So this is going to be very exciting. But to actually, we're going to be talking about interest. And when you think of interest problems, hopefully you are familiar with uh, the word or the concept of interest. If you have any sort of loan, for example, like a car loan or a house loan mortgage or like a credit card, you're, go you're going to have an associated amount of interest that you have to pay on that loan. Now, however, uh, if you invest money, okay, there are certain like savings accounts that will pay you interest. And this is what we're talking about in this prom. So let me go ahead and read the prompt to you. It says $45 of interest was earned over four months from an investment of $1,800. Uh, we're looking for the annual rate. What is the annual rate uh, that uh, bank or then, uh, you know, the financial institution that we're investing with, how much do they give us in terms of, or what's the rate of interest, okay? And that's always going to be expressed in terms of percent. Now, uh, a lot of you out there probably have heard of compound interest. And if you uh, haven't heard of compound interest, um, I believe I have the quote, I'm going to paraphrase the, the quote from Albert Einstein, who says that the most powerful force in the universe is compound interest. Because compound interest is what we call exponential growth, all right? Things kind of multiply and multiply, and they just kind of grow, 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 and they kind of grow um, the growth rate over time just accelerates, right? So a lot of things follow that pattern. Uh, certainly, uh, if you um, have money in a compound interest account, okay, financially, you'll hear a lot of financial uh, people say, oh, that's the way, you know, you generate long-term wealth, which is, you know, a lot of people have done that. But also this kind of compound interest growth or this exponential growth is also seen in population uh, growth, et cetera, et cetera. But anyways, that's for uh, another discussion. What we're talking about here is simple interest, okay, not compound interest. And uh, there is a formula for this that I'm going to get into. But even if you didn't have the formula, you should be able to reason through this and figure this out. So if you can, uh, you know, uh, get the right answer, go ahead and put that into the comment section. I'm going to show you the correct answer here in just one second, and then we're going to walk through this problem step by step. Also, if you need math help with the course you're taking, test prep or homeschooling, Make sure to check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go and take a look at the answer. So again, we're looking for the annual uh, rate. Okay, again, the annual interest rate that this particular finan financial institution is giving us on this investment. And the answer is the following, okay, 7.5%, okay, our annual rate. So again, you want to express your uh, answer in terms of percent. But uh, if you got this right, that is fantastic. Let's go ahead and celebrate by giving you a nice little happy face, an A plus, a 100%, and multiple stars. So you can tell your friends and family that indeed you can help them figure out simple interest problems. Now, even if you didn't know uh, a formula here, uh, you could should, you know, hopefully you could reason through this. The main kind of idea in this particular um, uh, problem is having an understanding of percent, okay? Now, if you, uh, you know, are not a math student, okay, if you're just kind of, you know, trying to brush up on some basic math, I would say that percent, it's got to be one of the top things you um need to learn because that percent symbol is used everywhere, especially when it comes to money decisions, right? Whether you're talking about a mortgage, a car loan, credit cards, or investments, you know, especially uh, the time of this video, you can actually make a decent amount of money on, uh, you know, like in a money market fund on interest. So you want to be able to calculate interest and you need to understand percent so if you're looking for a way to uh, review basic math again okay, nothing you know like uh, super complex like algebra or whatnot i'm going to recommend my um, math foundations course it's a three chapter mini course that i cover you know not only percent i cover fractions decimals all that kind of stuff that probably most of us have been away from for many years i'll leave a, a, a direct link to that in the description, but let's go ahead and get into the problem now. So I already kind of described what's going on, right? So here we've made $45 of interest. That's what was earned over four months. Okay. Now we put in 
$1,800 into this investment. So we want to get some uh, kind of terms of vocabulary down here in a second. But if we made $45 of interest over four months, how much uh, we need to be thinking in terms of one year, okay? Because we're looking for an annual rate. So if we made $45 in four months, how much are we going to make in one year? Well, if you're thinking, well, should I just multiply four times three to get to 12 months? Well, you're thinking, right. So I took that 45 and multiplied by three. I would get the uh, annual amount of interest that was earned, right? So this is this problem is trying to be a little bit tricky, but you know, uh, I'm kind of walking through the solution here step by step. And so if you're thinking in these terms, you are thinking correctly. But uh, we want to go in and um, get some vocabulary down here uh, because this is important when you start dealing with more complex uh, interest problems, like compound interest problems. So again, we're looking for the annual rate. So the annual rate of interest in terms of percent, we need to be thinking in terms of years, all right? In this case, one year. But what I have for you here is a lovely formula, a simple kind of interest formula. And this I right here is the amount of interest earned. Okay, so we'll, uh, we're going to go ahead and work in the units of measure of dollars. Okay, now if you're working in euros or pounds or whatnot, of course, that would be something different. But uh, this is going to be how much money we are going to make. Now this P here, and by the way, this would be over uh, one year, okay? Now you can adjust this formula to, uh, you know, talk about any uh, time, you know, other than one year, you know, like three months. You just have to express our time. I'll get to that in a second in a different way. So this P here is what we call the principal amount. It's the starting amount that you put into an investment. Now in this case, that would be uh, $1,800, right? So this is what we're starting off with. The R is what we're actually looking for. This is the rate of, of interest that this financial institution is going to give us on uh, investing this particular principal amount. And it's going to be almost always expressed in, a, in terms of uh, uh, with an A. Like in other words, like an APR. You've probably seen that uh, annual percentage rate or uh, A, uh, there was, anyways, you'll see this A, right? They're talking about one year. I don't want to get too, uh, you know, uh, detailed about this, but you want to be thinking in terms of one year. So our rate is in one year, and our time for this particular formula is going to be in uh, terms of uh, years, okay? So in this case, uh, we're looking at just one year, uh, one year's worth of activity, right? So we have $45 of interest was more, uh, earned over four months on this particular investment. What was the annual rate? So we want to be thinking in terms of one year. So that's why we got to adjust how much interest we're going to earn and our time, okay? But the unit of measure is going to be in years. Okay, so let's go ahead and kind of set this up now. So how much interest uh, is going to be earned in one year? Well, if we earn $45, uh, in four months, well, four times three is 12. So we just multiply that by three. We're going to earn $135 of interest. Now, our principal amount is our starting amount, right? That's $1,800. That's where we're investing. Our time is one, okay, or one year because we're looking for the annual rate. And what we're looking to solve for is R, okay? R is our, uh, going to be our uh, uh, annual rate of return on this particular investment. So we're just gonna use some basic algebra here. You don't need, if you're good at percent and you have your calculator, you don't even need to know this formula. You should be able to kind of uh, apply some common sense and figure this out. So if you're like, yeah, I didn't do all this, but I got the right answer, well, that's good as well. But I'm gonna suggest that you do understand how to use uh, you know, simple interest formulas because when you are working with more advanced uh, interest problems like compound interest, uh, problems. You need to understand the terminology uh, and how to work with uh, different amounts of time, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But let's go ahead and use some basic algebra to figure this problem out. Again, you didn't even have to do this uh, to get the right answer, but I'm going to uh, apply some algebra because algebra is so cool. All right, so here is our uh, interest uh, made on this particular investment. We know that's $135, so we'll put 135 there. Our P is what? That's our principal amount. So that's going to be 1800 R is what we're looking for. So that's our variable R. Okay, we're going to solve for this. 
and our time is one year. And so that'll be one. So we got 1800 uh, times R times one. So that's just gonna be 1800 R. So we have this simple uh, algebraic equation, 135 is equal to 1800 R. So how do we solve for R? Simple, we just divide both sides of the equation by 1800. So R will be equal to 135 divided by 1800. So when we do that uh, math, we get R is equal to 0 0.075. Now, if you answered um, with this uh, number right here, this value, well, you were pretty uh, pretty close, okay? Uh, but here's the deal. You, uh, again, financial institutions will not uh, are going to express uh, interest, your rate of return in terms of percent. So we have to go from a decimal to a percent, uh, or so a decimal to a percent, and how do we do that? Well, you multiply by 100, or effectively, you just move the decimal point over two places to the right, that's the consequence of multiplying by 100. So however you uh, remember it, uh, we're gonna end up with what, 7.5%. So that is the annual rate that uh, we're getting on this particular um, investment, which, you know, in terms of, you know, um, you know, uh, it this being like realistic, well, in this right now, this is, you know, very good. You know, uh, from my understanding, the stock market, for example, you know, this is kind of close to what the stock market yields over, you know, uh, hundreds, you know, like a hundred years. I think uh, the annual average annual rate of return on investing in stocks is like around 8%. But right now, this is uh, definitely not uh, achievable, at least uh, in terms of, you know, um, a safe investment like CDs or a money market fund. Now, I know I'm going off on a tangent, so some of you might be saying, well, is this even possible? Because this would be pretty nice, right? If you put $1,800 in, you get $135 every year. But right now, you can get uh, around 5%. Uh, uh, so anyways, just a little bit of a reminder to, um, you know, apply this math that you're learning, right? Go ahead and do something with it, and making money is not a bad thing. Okay, so hopefully this little video helped you out. If that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.